forest to see Miss Jean. She lives in a house that is mostly green, except for the chimney and windows and walls, and one or two places just down the halls, and filled with rabbits and newts and snails, and fat little puppies that wag their tails, and a whale and a tiger and elephants too. Well, maybe not elephants. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear puppies. Happy birthday to you. Very good. How'd you like that? Do you know what great occasion this is? It's the seven weeks birthday of Sid's Basset Hound puppies. Isn't that a cause for celebration? <laughs> Sid is one of our new friends, and all his puppies are our new friends, too. How many puppies did there used to be, Sid? Ten. What happened to the others? We, um, the, uh, the guy who bred the puppies, they took one, and we sold two of them. Sold two, and you want to sell all the rest of them sooner or later? <laughs> because who do you still have that you're going to keep? Who's still at home that didn't come today? Um, I bet you can guess. Mother. The mother, right? What's her name, Sid? Freckles. Freckles! And which one of the puppies looks like her? This one. Is that, oh, that one? I thought, I thought, wasn't she very pale? I don't know if she looks more like that one. Okay, well, I learned a lot about basset hounds just when I went to see Sid's puppies when they were very little because I never knew that basset hounds could be three different kinds. Brian, can you see what three different kinds of colors of pup, color combinations of puppies are in this cage? Yes, um, what? brown, white, and black. Some of them are brown and white, and what's that called? Red, they're gonna turn red? Yeah. And what color do you call the one that's very, very pale over there? Like something that's very sour. Lemon? Lemon, right. I think that's what Sid's mother told me. And then these are like, or what I thought, I thought all about basset hounds look like the ones that are black and white and brown. Which kind do you like best, Brian? Um, I like that brown one right there. The one that's just yawning? Yeah. <laughs> Well, if we didn't have a cat, I'd like to get him. Uh, oh, you have a cat, He's though, don't you, Sid? How do they get along? Not too good. Not well, too good. <laughs> I, but if, uh, I'm afraid if I get a um, dog because Fluffy might hurt the dog. My, my next door's neighbor's dog, it, it can really run fast, but um, uh, Fluffy, my cat, she goes after it and uh, scratches it all She off. chases the dog. What Fluffy. happens at your... She scratched her ear all up one, one time when my uh, neighbors went on a vacation. And his ear was all bloody. It's usually the other way, yeah. isn't it? The dogs chase cats? What happens yes. at your house, Sid? The dogs chase the cat. The dogs chase the cat, and there's so many dogs. Poor cat. <laughs> this time the uh, poor dog, lucky cat. <laughs> what kind of animals do you have at your house, uh, Janine? Well, we had um, two baby turtles. One, <laughs> well, we used to have one big turtle, but... Um, you know, we couldn't keep it that long because it wasn't <coughs> like it in the box. And so we have two baby turtles and we have a dog. What, any special kind of dog? It's half Collie and half German Shepherd. Oh, that sounds like a good watchdog. What are Basset Hounds good for, Sid? Hunting. Hunting, right. Well, let's, let's take one. Let's, do you think it'd be all right if we each held one? And uh, which one Which one do you like the best? What's the your favorite? The fattest one. Okay, the fattest one. The one that I like. <laughs> Okay, let me hand out a few puppies here and we'll move the cage over so we can get a better look. You'll have to brush a few crumbs off. This cage isn't as clean as... Now, which one would you like? Mm. Oh, I should ask Janine first, ladies first. Which one would you like? I like the little black one. This one right here? Yeah, that's... That one? Oh, yeah. okay. Come here, little black one. They, they had lunch before they came to Hodgepodge Lodge, didn't they? So that's why they're all sleeping. Afternoon nap. Yeah, afternoon. I guess I'll have that one. This one? Uh, that this one. one. <laughs> yeah. 
It's gonna kill your face. Well, let's see. Yeah. I think I'll wake this one up. Okay. Let's just slide, slide the cage over here. Excuse me, Brian. I didn't mean to run into you. Can you get your foot. <laughs> foot around. It gets a little more crowded in Hodgepodge Lodge every now and then. There we are. Everybody has a puppy. Isn't there a saying uh, that goes around saying happiness is having a warm puppy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we all will be pretty happy this afternoon. <laughs> okay, Sid, let's start with you. Yours is sitting up and posing for his picture, but he's still mm -hmm. sleeping. <laughs> he's not gonna let anybody bother him and wake him up from his nap. Uh, tell us some of the things that make a basset hound a basset hound. How can how could you tell that that was a basset hound? Well, their ears are real long. Their ears are very long and floppy. No matter what color they are, their ears are long and floppy. And uh, what else? Well, their paws are real fat. And paws stuff. are very <laughs> fat. Yes, look at this one's paw. Yeah. He has a very fat, very fat paw. Uh, Janine, can you see something, something different to mention that helps you tell that this is a basset hound and not, not a beagle or some other kind of hunting dog? Well, the colors. Well, you know. Yeah, the colors, right? And isn't there something special? Don't they look like they have too much skin sometimes? Mm -hmm. have... Like under here. Oh, look, look at that! <laughs> so you can get a whole handful of skin <laughs> from, from that puppy's head. And that's supposed to be the sign of a good basset hound, isn't it? When it has lots of wrinkles in its face. Some people think they look sort of sad because they have such wrinkly faces. Hello, puppy. Mm -hmm. Do any of them have names? Yeah. No, no, lemon color. The very pale lemon colored one. And what's her name? Petunia. Petunia. That's a funny name for a dog. <laughs> And the mother's name is Freckles. And did, did you do you remember what the father's name was? He and I know he's at some other somebody else's house. I think it's Snoopy. Snoopy. Oh, I think that's a good name for a basset. That when the animals like his mother, we don't know where for the name the name that we call him mother. Oh, you <laughs> you mean name it after the mother? Mm -hmm. Freckles. Freckles the second maybe. <laughs> It's funny to think that this color is going to change into uh, what color? Red, red, reddish, red. reddish brown. Reddish brown. Reddish brown. These, the ones that are brown and white are going to be reddish brown. That's adorable. Yeah. They're like this and get your facial sad. Has, <laughs> turn him around, will you, so Brian, Brian can see his real sad face. <laughs> oh boy. Is that one of the things you're supposed to do to make him look more like mm -hmm. basset hounds? Uh, Champion basset hounds make their faces all wrinkly. Try that on yours, Janine. Well, I think Sid's yeah. got Sid's got the one with the wrinkliest face. I can't that works see pretty good. <laughs> He's more interested in watching his brothers and sisters. How many boys and how many girls were in the litter, Sid? Um, I think there's four boys and six girls. Four boys and six girls. That's almost came out even, didn't it? And had yeah. had the mother ever had puppies before? Mm-hmm. How many did she have last Seven. time? Seven. Seven. <laughs> So how many has she had all together? Seventeen. Seventeen. That's a pretty, pretty large family, isn't it? Seventeen children, but uh, not all at once. What do these puppies eat? Puppy cow. Puppy, Puppy cow. cow. Puppy cow. And no milk? I uh, just add water. Just water. That's an idea. Maybe some of these would be thirsty. Let's see. Who's ready for a drink? Me. <laughs> you! <laughs> Let's see if we can get a, have a puppy that's thirsty. Are you thirsty? I'm thirsty. Look at this one. This key. The ears are going in. Oh, dear me. <laughs> I know some people that have uh, dogs with long Did ears you? tie their ears together with a rubber band when they're eating or drinking so they don't get their get them messy. I guess you don't do that with basset hounds too. <laughs> well, he had a 
He or she had a drink. I didn't see what I had out of the little boy. He had a drink. You want to try yours, Brian? <laughs> Listen. I guess they're looking around for some puppy chow. Well, oh, any more drinks? Have they been to the vets yet? Mm -hmm. What ha what did he do to them? We gave him the worm shots and the... Uh... What other kind of shots do dogs have to get? I've never had a dog. So I don't really know what Ra dogs... Rabies? Yeah, oh, rabies, worm? but they haven't have them yet. I don't oh, think they, they, got them yet. they get those later. You want to yeah. It's just as important to take puppies to the doctor as it is to take babies to the doctor. This thing has bad breath. Look at that oh. one. <laughs> oh, look at that thirsty puppy. <laughs> Her ears are getting wet, too. I bet it feels good on a warm day. Okay, Sid, I bet yeah, yours could be you now. Yours is the biggest <laughs> one, so I bet he might be the thirstiest one, too. <laughs> His ears reaching all the way to the bottom of the dish. <laughs> you can even see what color his tongue is. Where do you keep them at home, Sid? I know in you the playhouse. In, in the playhouse? <laughs> Where did you keep them when they were first born? In a box. It's um, for puppy. When, when she has puppies, she got to lay in it. Oh, a special box for having mm -hmm. puppies, and that was down your cellar? She was a very good mother because she didn't hurt any of her puppies. Some some mothers lie they, on their puppies and smother them. And when they drink, when they try to um, drink from her, she always breaks her head off. Goodness, they yes, I, <laughs> I hear that she sort of got, didn't like them nursing after they got to be a little big because look at their, feel their toenails. When they would nurse from their mother, their toenails scratched her tummy. Mm -hmm. So she... What's that called when the mother decides the puppies are old enough not to drink milk from her anymore? And it's time for them to, to uh, learn to eat regular food. Weaning, that, have you ever heard that term? That's what all mammals do. All mammals sooner or later have to be weaned. Uh, and that's what the mother, this mother basset hound decided that the puppies were getting too big and poking her with her fingernails when they were nursing, and so she decided it was time for them to learn to eat puppy chow and, and uh, be on their own. So she, what kind of noise is that, Janine? It sounds like he's snoring. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> is it what, you think he wants to get back and take a nap? Yeah, why don't you do that, put him back in and take, let him take a nap. And Mine likes my hair. So yeah, your, your hair is just about the color of those brown spots over its eyes. My mother's going to kill me when I get home. Why? I'm <laughs> all. <laughs> oh, I think you still look very handsome, Brian. I don't think the puppy ruined your clothes. You know, there are some people that belong to Bassett clubs, and they go out on Sunday afternoons or Saturdays or all day and just let the hounds out and follow them across the fields. Have you ever been out on a hunt like that? Mm -mm. There's a club not too far from here, but I've never been out with them. But that sounds like a nice thing to do, don't you think, on a fall day or a spring day when it isn't too hot or too cold, just to let the dogs out and walk after the dogs and try to keep up with them. And what do you suppose are some of the things the dogs might find when they roam across the fields? Mm. Rats. Rats, mm -hmm. right. Mice. 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 How about something a little bigger that... that uh, with a white Where tail. Uh, if you went out in the yeah, you might possums. Possums. Well, what's um, the what's the uh, what's something with long ears that was very rabbits. common? Rabbits. Rabbits. Don't you think that's probably the first thing that they might scare up? And how do um, how do dogs know to that where they're going to find an animal? How do they track an animal down? They um, sense a smell. 
You think that's right, Sid? <laughs> they have a very good sense of smell, don't they? And uh, they probably have pretty good. Goodness, now don't fight, boys. <laughs> Can you think of some other kinds of hunting dogs? Um. There are some that have short legs like this and floppy ears and tails that stick up, but not quite such heavy feet. And lots of people use them to go hunt, rabbit hunting with. Beagles? Beagles, right. It's almost beagles and basset. What's the matter, boy? He cer certainly has a worried looking face. <laughs> Looks like giving me a kiss. What is it about dogs that they, on very hot days they have to uh, hold their mouths open and pant? Because their um, fur is too long for them. It's real hot for them. Their fur is hot, and they don't they don't perspire like people do, do they? They have to uh, get cool off by uh, opening their mouths and. They know how to do do the doggy paddle pretty well. <clears throat> they see a pool, they smell a pool nearby. Someone gets out and they they put, decided to take a walk around the block and there's some water on him. Then uh, here comes here comes a, a dog walking up. Hmm, pool. <laughs> Have yours ever been? Along, and then he climbs up the ladder. <laughs> have yours ever been swimming? I know you have a pool in your backyard. I don't know whether they'd be very good swimmers or not. They have such short legs. <laughs> 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 We've got pretty fat dogs, probably move pretty fast. Do you have to, uh, some dogs you have to give, spend a lot of time brushing them, the ones that have long hair and combing their hair. Do you ever do that to them? No, but one time when we uh, caught a dog, it was, it was like a bear, so big. Uh, a stray dog? Yeah, I guess so. It was and, a big one. And it had, it had things stuck in its fur. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think you're smart to have uh, short, short-haired dogs. Where do you want to go? Hmm? <laughs> Anything else you children would like to know about basset hounds? You think you'd like to have a basset puppy for a pet if you had room, yeah. if your mother would let you, and if you had enough money to buy one? <laughs> why do they, um, why are these one particular um, dogs that go hunting? Why can't they take, like, collies or something like that? Well, there are, someday we'll have to have a long talk about that because they're different dogs. Collies are more working dogs than German Shepherds. They, you know, they're bred to do work, rounding up cows and so forth. Miss Jane, what? This might, uh, you might not be able to answer it, but how come, uh, why aren't they just a solid color instead of like mixed colors like... Well, because that's the way Basset hounds have been over the years the that they've been bred. But, I mean, uh, they don't have fur on them when they're born, but they're just bare. And then how do, how oh, yes, they, they have fur on them when they're born, don't they, Sid? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. When, when, it, when it comes out, it's blood all over them, it doesn't look like it But when the mother but cleans them up... miniature schnauzers, they're in, they're in little, little sacks like... Yeah, all, all mammals are born in little sacks. That's the way they come, and then the mother helps them get out and cleans them up. Are you going to be sad? When, <laughs> are you going to be sad when all these puppies are gone, Sid? I'm sad. <laughs> Do you have to help clean, uh, feed them and take them out for their exercise and so forth? <laughs> you just get to play with them huh? <laughs> and uh, help keep them tame. Well, that's a valuable job, too. Yeah, and I have a relay race with them. My next door neighbors, uh, when uh, they had both of their dogs, one of them, uh, one of them they had to get rid of, but that when, when, they, when they were both there, um, they'd have relay races, like they'd have one dog biscuit here. I mean, uh, they would, uh, they, they would uh, line up and um, they, someone would hold them, and then um, uh, as soon as someone would throw one out, they would go up there and then they would both take off, and usually it was Sophie, but Sadie, she, she was nice and plump and fat, so she, she hardly even got it. I bet they bet Sid has fun playing then games they, with his puppies. Then puppy. they just uh, cheated and gave uh, Sadie a few for nothing. Well, uh, they we gave worked. It, they we gave it for a for a prize for trying so hard. <laughs> Let's go over to the um, discovery table and look at one of those animals that a basset hound might find if it's out on a hunt. Roar, are you coming? I think Roar is a little jealous of all your puppies, Sid. <laughs> He likes to get a lot of the attention around here. Hmm. 
Remember, can you recognize which animal this is? Possum. Awesome. Of the ones we talked about. Right. I think possum. It might. Uh, I'll let you pat it in a minute. But what's it doing now? A natural reaction to possums when you catch them. What do you think it's doing? Playing dead. Playing dead. Yeah. And That's what does it hope that we'll do? The enemy will go away. That will go away. Or if one of your dogs found this possum or a grown up possum, the possum lay down like that and pretend to be dead then the dog might discour get discouraged and go away. But that's one, one way possums have of defending themselves because they really aren't very fast runners and they're not fierce fighters, so they have to have some way to protect they don't themselves. They look dead. <laughs> oh. Sometimes, if, uh, yeah, this baby's been uh, in captivity for a couple of weeks. Its mother got killed and a friend of mine's been taking care of it, so it's, pro it's used to being picked up and handled, but a wild possum that was picked up for the first time or, or discovered for the first time would just might roll right over with its feet sticking out and uh, really look like it was dead. In school, there was, <coughs> our last unit was animals and we were studying about them and uh, one of the reports were on playing dead. And <laughs> animals uh, that play dead? Yeah. How many animals did you find out that play dead besides the possum? Did you? Uh, I don't know, I can't remember, but I know that the possum was one. And uh, then there was another report on, on some kind of animal. I don't know what it was, but whenever it would get scared or um, was afraid that something was going to happen to it, then it would dig a hole and bury itself. Well, that's a good way to escape, was, too, if you could dig a hole fast enough. <laughs> yeah, but it uh, dug a hole real, real fast. What's important to remember about possums? Oh, there they they have a very unusual way of carrying their babies around. Have you ever? Heard they put them on the back. They have a hole in their stomach. Right. They have a pouch in, in their tummies. That's is this one? The, now this is a little boy possum. Uh, the mother possums have pouches that the babies climb into when they're born. When they're born, they're only as big as a bean. Can you imagine something? Yeah. And all the possums in one litter would fit in a teaspoon. Not all the puppies in your dog's litter would fit in a teaspoon, would they? <laughs> but all the possums in a possum litter, there might be a dozen of them, would all fit into a teaspoon. And they just climb up their mother's fur and get in the pouch and just stay there until they're big enough, until they get their fur and they're big enough to get along. Miss Jean, why do they, um, why does the tails go around the tree? Well, back? that's a special kind of tail called a prehensile tail. Monkeys have it, see? That's one way. Sometimes you see pictures of them hanging on to a tree branch doesn't, like that. Like, doesn't it hurt the tail? Could they come, could the tail come off? No, no. Some animals, right, we, we had an experience one time, didn't we, with an animal whose tail came off. Mm -hmm. But that kind of animal, remember what kind that was? A skink. A skink. That animal can grow a new tail. But if a possum's tail came off, it couldn't grow a new tail. It <laughs> can hang by its tail when it's climbing around the trees. <laughs> Jumps each branch, you catch by his tail. Right, the monkey. You two want to take care of the possum for a minute, and I have another animal over here that can play dead. It's just a baby, too. We have a baby what? possum and a baby. No, it won't bite. This animal only eats toads, and it's a very special kind of. What kind of animal is this, Sid? <laughs> oh, what, what is it? You know what it is. It's a, what? Is it a snake? It's a snake, right. What's it doing? Oh dear, it's going to the bathroom. I guess we we'll, That's all right. Don't worry about it. We'll find something. It smells something. terrible. <laughs> We've got a Kleenex up here and we clean it up. We've got to do it in front of me. Oh. Possums belong in the woods, right? Not in houses and when they're visiting. You never can tell what's going to happen. That's a right, boy. Sid, hold on to the snake a minute. Maybe we better put the possum back in his cage. And you'll be trying to figure out what kind of snake this is. Maybe Brian can help because he's studied animals that play dead. You remember this animal in the report on animals that play dead? This one isn't playing dead because it's uh, been in captivity for a while. But if you find one of these snakes out in the wild, it'll turn over, open its mouth, and let its tongue hang out and hope that you'll go away. It has a nose like a little pig, 
and its name is the hog-nosed snake. Has a few other, you remember that? Has a few other tricks too. It can spread its neck out and look like a, what kind of a snake can spread its neck out? We don't have them around here. See them in the zoo. Cobras, right? And if it's sitting in a pile of dry leaves when you find it, it'll wiggle its tail back and forth in the dry leaves. And what do you think that would sound like? A rattlesnake. So that, it has several pretty good ways of defending itself, doesn't it? One time I went um, in these uh, woods near our uh, house, and uh, me and my friend, we, were, uh, we heard this noise, and uh, we said it was a rattlesnake, so we got out real fast, but it wasn't. Isn't that right? It might have been a hognose snake rattling its tail. might have been a black snake. A lot of snakes can do that. But hognose snakes are very interesting and good snakes to have around. This one is, um, what colors is he, Sid? Gray and gray and white. And white. Sometimes you find some that have sort of orange on them. Would you like to feel him, Celine? Ew. <laughs> very scary. If you're not used to handling snakes, it is a little, little, not scary, but surprising at first. And you, should you ever pick up a snake that you don't know the identity of? Right, the best thing to do is if you see a snake in the woods, is just to watch it go its own way. You want to touch it, Sid? Or you, or you held it for me. You've already had a turn. Okay, how about you, Brian? The hog no snake Can that I hold can it? play dead like the possum. I think we better let him sit out here and, and uh, take it easy for a few minutes. The puppies have all settled down. Or are they waking up? <laughs> Look at that one. <laughs> the snake's going to be Yes, he's looking for some shade. Well, I hope you've had a fun time at HodgePodge Lodge today learning about Basset Hounds. Thank you very much for coming and bringing your seven friends, Sid. And uh, I'd like to see them again when, if, when yours gets grown, grown up. You look around and see some, maybe you'll see a Basset Hound in your neighborhood, and maybe you'll even see a possum or a hog-nosed snake. Goodbye and come back soon again. was made possible through funds contributed by members of the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting. Studios of the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting.